self being and witness what is the relation between self being and witness self is just an idea of the mind because it is hard for the mind to accept being being is pure nothingness that contains the entire cosmos everything how can self or the mind understand that which is pure nothingness contains the entire cosmos for that witness is a device the masterly device it is important in the beginning but somehow or the other at the right moment even the device has to be dropped it is like you are going to a function to another city there are people who are living in different cities people who are from the same city they use different devices to reach to that place some may use the device of a train flat vehicles walking but there will come a point when you have to drop that device completely in order to reach that state it is everything is a device because truth cannot be said so only devices can be given through which you can understand truth you have to be convinced about the device that this is the device that will take you to the destination and then they will have to be dropped at the last moment but that does not mean that you have to drop them now if you drop the vehicle of the flight or the vehicle or the train or the bus then you cannot reach therefore dropping the device now will not help now you have to use them to their utmost possibility and then that moment will come by itself when the device has reached to its peak and it disappears and you are in the experience of the fourth dimension the whole problem arises because truth cannot be said so some kind of device which will bring you to truth is necessary and the device has to be such that it will not become an obstruction in itself so all the master gives you a device which is made in such a way that it is going to disappear automatically autonomously the moment you come close to truth this is the way of the masters there are many devices which are good but dangerous if you hold on to them they become obstacles for instance i if i tell you that patanjali says god it is a device nobody before him or after him has ever said that there have been people who have said god is true and there have been people who said there is no god but patanjali the great scientist of the inner the great mathematician of the inner said god is a device and it is totally different from god he is neither theist nor atheist he is simply of a scientific mind he says god is a hypothesis the fight about his existence 
or non-existence. The conflict between theists and atheists is non-existent and baseless. You do not fight about the hypothesis of the others, but it is a dangerous hypothesis. Even in the life of a man like Ram Krishna, it became an obstacle. I particularly take the example of Ram Krishna Paramans because it is very evident how a device could become an obstruction. And it has actually become an obstruction in his life. So the device is not going to leave you automatically at the right moment. It is dangerous. It will cling. It will obstruct your vision. It will take you to the final step, but it won't allow you to take it. A great attachment with the device itself will become the barrier. Sufis often say that you have to abandon three things. Tarke Tark, Tarke Ukba and Tarke Mula. What is Tarke Tark? Tark means to abandon. And Tark means logic. The first thing that you have to abandon along the path is logic. If you abandon logic, only then you can enter into the realm of the heart. Then why are you entering in this field? Why are you going to a particular master that your other world will be organized, you will encounter God, you will reach to heaven. These are all desires. So Tarki Ukba means Ukba means the other world, which is an hypothesis. You have to abandon that. The second step Tarki Ukba, you have to abandon all that. And the last of all, the obstacle is Tarki Mola. Mola means the master. You have to abandon the master also. On the path, nothing is important. A simple example if you are in a honeymoon and you want to hold on to your clothes. You cannot enter into the bliss of it. You have to abandon everything. Only then you can enter. Now let me take the example of Ram Krishna Paramahansa, how it happened in his, in his life that the device became an obstruction. Ram Krishna was a devotee of Mother Goddess Kali, the Hindu Goddess, the embodiment of the energy field of Shiva. And he was not an ordinary or formal devotee. He really loved her. Sometimes from the morning to evening he would go on dancing and singing in the temple. And sometimes he would lock the temple for days together and not even go into it. It was reported because the temple belonged to a rich woman named Rani Rasmani. He was a paid servant. He was appointed as the priest in the temple. People said that it was not right for a few days. The temple does not even open. Other devotees come and have to go, uh, go back because Ram Krishna is not in the mood to open the doors. And sometimes Ram Krishna is so much in the mood that the devotees get tired. When they go into the temple, you wait for the final offering, which in Hindu temple or the Sikh temple is the food. The, the food that is offered to God is to be distributed to all the worshippers who are there. It is thought the prasad or the food is the grace. That is God's grace and his gift. So people wait for it. 
But how long can we wait? A man goes on dancing, singing from morning till evening. Worshippers come and go. They have come and go. Because the food cannot be distributed, it can only be distributed when the priest has stopped worshipping. And all priests are paid. So they are always in a hurry to finish. In fact, one priest will go to many temples so he can get salaries from other temples and places as well. This applies to almost all the priests. And immediately they distribute the, uh, the offering and run to the other temple. There are so many temples all around that the priests can manage five to six temples very easily. But Ramakrishna was not such a priest. He was really a lover. To him, goddess was not just a statue and the worship was not just a ritual. It was a reality, not a dream. The owner of the temple, Rasmani, called him and asked him, what is the matter? I have been hearing different kinds of complaints about you. One is that sometimes you worship the whole day. In what scripture is it written to worship whole day? Ramakrishna said, I do not know any scripture. And I had made it clear even before you employed me that I am uneducated. I don't know any scripture. I only no devotion songs, so I see. And to me it is not a question of worshipping for a certain time. Time disappears when I worship. I don't have any idea of a certain time. Once I am in it, I do not know when the morning has become evening. So if you do not want me, I can leave you. But I am going to be this way. Rasmani said, this is not the only complaint because this can be allowed the whole day worshipping. There is no harm. But sometimes you do not open the door of the temple. He said, that's true. Sometimes I am angry at the goddess. I love her, but she does not listen to me. So once in a while, after all, I am a human being. I get cross, so I say, okay, remain close for two or three days. That will bring you to your senses. No food, no worship. But if you have any trouble with this, I can leave. Rasmani could not tell him to leave. The man was so beautiful and authentic. And what he was saying had a beauty of its own. Even not opening the doors was part of a love affair, just quarrel of lovers. She said, even that can be allowed, because I want you to be here. But one thing is that I hear that before offering the food to the goddess, you, you will taste every sweet, everything yourself. He said, that's true as well, because my mother used to make the sweets, the Bengali, the, they make the sweets. Ramakrishna was a Bengali. And even when the mother makes the feed, the milk ready for the child, she tastes it first and then gives it. She would make again. My wife prepares the sweets. She prevents me. It is not right. First, they have to be offered to the goddess and then it can be distributed. But I cannot offer anything which is tasteless or is not made well. I have to taste them first. If you do not want it, I am ready to go, but I will continue in the same way. The man was very simple and what he was saying was beautiful. He cannot offer to the goddess something that may not be the best. Only the best should be offered 
But how to find it out? One has to taste it. He worshipped in the temple of Dakshinishwar near Calcutta his whole life. Towards the end of his life, just a few years before he died, he told the goddess one morning, Now the doctors are saying that I have cancer of the throat. It is not growing, but it can start growing any moment. And before I die, I want to experience truth. I am ready and I will do everything. I will dance today before you, sing before you. In every temple of the Mother Kali, there always hangs a big sword. Because in the past that sword was used and it is still used in the main temple of Calcutta to cut off the heads of the animals for sacrifice. Ramakrishna was not doing that, but the sword has become part of the temple. He said, if by the evening I do not have the experience, I will take the sword and kill myself. The responsibility will be yours. A few worshippers were there. They rushed out and told everybody, the madman is going to do something. Now this is too much. All that he was doing before was okay. But now he is going to kill himself if he does not experience truth. A great crowd gathered in the temple. And Ramakrishna danced madly, sang madly whole day. And as the sun was setting, he pulled out the soul and said to Goddess, So I am going to cut off my head as a sacrifice to you. Either the experience or my head will be at your feet. And he, as he was going to cut himself with the sword, the sword fell from his hands on the ground. He remained there for six. To the outside world, he was unconscious. But in his own experience, it was the experience of Samadhi. A beautiful state, utterly silent and blissful. And after six hours, when he was woken up, he awoke with tears and said, Why have you woken me up? You should have left me in that state. Just a few days afterwards, there was a master passing by who heard about Ram Krishna that he had six hours somebody. The master came, Ram Krishna was his humble man, he touched the feet of the master and said, help me, because I attained that experience, but it was only for six hours, then I was back to my old stage. The master said, you do not understand. It was not a real experience. You forced that experience upon yourself by your stubbornness. Because you were going to kill yourself. After dancing the whole day, your mind simply stopped. Seeing the situation, the man is going to kill himself. It had nothing to do with Kali or anybody else. It was simply the stopping of the mind. And that experience was only an experience of the mind when it is not chattering and you feel immense silence and beauty and joy, the mind is dropped at that moment. This is not a real experience of truth. You will have to do this one thing which is very hard and that is to cut all attachments with the mother Kali, which is Tarki Mola. You get something in the company of the Master. When you go and sit down in His presence, you feel a certain kind of bliss, harmony and a different world. You want to hold on to that. Master is a device and you have to abandon that if you continue beyond to the new horizon. That is your problem. 
you have passed all the barriers but now this is the last barrier and it is so difficult because you have to stick everything on her so do i see you sit in meditation close your eyes and when you see mother kali arising near the third eye which is going to happen he said yes it happens when i close my eyes she is there so the master said that is good that is the moment this is the time that you have not to cut your head take the sword cut the mother goddess into two pieces you have to abandon the master this is the last obstacle that you have to abandon consciously and knowingly unless you abandon your master you cannot go beyond he will always remain an obstruction sometimes the master create devices so you move away from him you can grow so he did that is good that is the moment this time you are not going to cut your head take the sword and cut the mother goddess into two pieces ram krishna said my god that is very difficult i cannot hurt her you are telling me to kill her but the man said unless you do it you will never attain to truth he would close his eyes tears would flow from his eyes and that was the great joy on his face on his face and radiance as well he would open his eyes and the master would ask and he would say yes i saw her but i forget her all about killing her she is so beautiful and the attachment is so long so long as i can remember he was very small when he became the priest two or three times he the master said this is the last time if you cannot do it then i will do it i have brought this piece of glass he had a piece of broken glass when i see that tears have started flowing from your eyes i will know that you are seeing the mother goddess i will cut your forehead with a sharp piece of glass to remind you that this is the time you do the same cut her in two pieces it is just your idea there is nothing else. it is just a hypothesis this is why when patanjali said god is a hypothesis what ram krishna was seeing mother mother goddess kali it was simply a hypothesis a device the master had to cut his forehead and the mark remained on his forehead for the rest of his life blood started flowing over his face but deep inside he managed to gather courage and cut the mother goddess into two pieces this is psychological you have to abandon the master i reached to that state when i abandoned all ties with the master my uncle my nana everyone but that does not mean i lose the respect abandon all ties but deep inside he managed courage to cut the mother goddess into two as she fell in two pieces it was as if the door has opened and the whole universe was his he has no truth it took 6 days for him to come back the first words that he uttered when he came back are immensely important he said the last barrier has fallen if the master was not there he would have not been able to achieve that the last barrier is gone any device can become a barrier to it may help you to get rid of other things but finally you have to get rid of and that may be very difficult it was so difficult for ram krishna and that was the last day never again did he go into temple afterwards he lived three or four years he simply forgot all about kali and there was there are devices 
which will not create such troubles and there are devices which will fall automatically. The moment when you are reaching to the climax of your being, they will simply fall down. And you remember many times I have mentioned to you the story of ten bulls. The man is searching bull, the energy, the energy field, the truth. Many names of the same thing. And in the last he says, I go to the market bare-breasted, with a bottle of wine and a woman, I extend no magic. Before me, even trees get alive. Such a life of ordinary ordinariness. He is involved in the day-to-day -day activity, going to the marketplace, bare-breasted, with a bottle of wine and a woman, representing the simple life, day-to-day -day activities. You are going to work, whatever is your work, and you simply doing your work without anything, and that is the way. I call a master, a great, a perfect master, who creates device which are going to fall on their own when the moment has come for the person to experience ultimate. Other devices are created by small people. Perhaps they don't know what these devices can become, can do or become obstructions, attachments. So sometimes I say, so everything that I say or speak to you is a device. Even my speaking on a day to on a week to week basis is simply a device so that you can just be there. Your mind is engaged, listening to me. Sometimes invisible can go on transpiring between you and me, between your heart and my heart. That is the real thing. The word will help the mind to remain engaged. They are like just toys. When you do not want the children to disturb you. You are steady. You will give them toys and they will start playing with the toys. So you can do your work or study or do anything. Words are just toys for the mind, not truth. But simple toys. But while the mind is engaged, something can happen from my depth to you, from my heart to you. You may not understand it, but will start, but this will start bringing change in you, transformation in you. Sometimes simply sitting with me or those who have opportunity to be around me, engaged in day-to-day -day activities, making a simple joke, but there is something transpiring and that alone can transform you. But then there is always the problem that your mind will disturb you. I have tried sitting in silence with you. I have seen that the problem is I can reach your heart less. Your mind is disturbing too much. The speaking seems to be a better device. Your mind remains engaged. What next he say? It is so fascinating. The mind finds it so fascinating. The mind does not disturb. The mind simply looks and waits. What is going to happen? What is he is going to say and tell us about this particular story? It's such a fascinating one. What is going to be said? And meanwhile, the real work is the real work is happening from my heart to your heart. And that is the work of